Hey guys, got a whole bunch of cool equipment here for teardown. I'll probably split these up into separate videos, but uh, we've got this uh, MAP spectrum analyzer, which I believe is an X-ray fluorescent spectrometer. It's used for uh, detecting leaded paint. I, that's what I was told. You just push it up on the surface and it will take, uh, take a reading. It's got a uh, control unit uh, with it as well. Also got this Hewlett Packard uh, 5518A laser head. Uh, as well as this, some sort of an aircraft fan. It's a IMC Magnetics uh, vane axial fan, 200 volts, 400 hertz, 11,400 RPMs. So this is bound to be really powerful. Uh, I think we'll play around with that in this video. I'll save the other, uh, the other stuff for the other videos. And it's always fun when you don't know what something is. This is a cryo engine assembly by CTI Cryogenics. I really have no idea what this thing does, and that's always what you want for a teardown. My friend who gave it to me said he applied power and it sounded like something was spinning, so we'll have to open that up, but that'll be in a different video. Anyway, let's have a play around with this, uh, with this fan. You have to figure out a way to make 400 hertz power to run it. There's a couple of options to get 400 hertz uh, to drive this. Uh, first off, I was thinking it was this alternator. This has six poles, so we'd have to spin it to about 4,000 RPM to get 400 hertz, but I couldn't find any easy way to drive it. The other thing I had that was about right was this RC airplane motor. This is seven poles, so we have to go to around 3500 RPM. That's exactly what this drill press spins at. This is a one horsepower drill press, so I'm thinking that would be enough power to drive this. And then the output of this is something around uh, 17 volts, DC, volts uh, AC at that speed, so it goes down here to a Variac. I've wired it, uh, the motor is wired up to the wiper, so instead of getting 0 to 1, a ratio of 0 to 1, it gets a ratio from 1 to infinity as you turn it down. Obviously you can't, uh, if you go too high you'll saturate the transformer, but this uh, should work pretty well for generating the, uh, converting the 17 volts up to the 200 volts uh, delta this needs. And that's just wired over to the motor. And we have a current meter on the, on the output. Uh, the phase-to-phase -phase resistance of this was uh, about 10 ohms. I'm figuring something around 1 to 2 amps is about right. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's give this a go. We seem to have this right because when you spin the generator, the motor starts spinning. Okay, I've got this to set to minimum voltage. Let's give this a try. It's starting to spin there. Oh. As we go up, you can hear it uh, start to slow the drill down. Right now we're just blocking up the air. Wow, that's fast. Power. Wow, that was powerful. Yeah, definitely that drill press. That drill press is not able to keep that uh, motor driven at that how speed. How's the motor here? Is getting... How's the motor? Warm, motor is so oh, motor is pretty warm. Yeah. yeah. And how is the variac? Yeah, slightly warm. Yeah, so we're getting currents of something on the order of a little bit less than two amps, so that seems safe for this motor. It's very slightly warm, but yeah, that was just insanely powerful. So what I'm thinking we can do, I'll take this and put it, instead of in the drill press, we'll go put it in the mill outside, which has a five horsepower drive instead of the one horsepower on this drill press, and that way we should be able to get it to full speed. Okay, that should supply a lot more power now. Got the Variac down here, and this is going off a long cord. Cord fan over there, so you can actually uh, look at it. This is going at um, half speed right now, so uh, just under 18, 1750 RPM. Let's try that. That should be about 200 hertz, so we need about 100 volts here. So let's turn that up. Okay, Walter, is that uh, clear? Okay, so let's turn this up now. We want to go about 100 volts. Okay, let's 
get the fans going. Well, that sounds quite powerful already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not slowing down at all. too much this motor is not capable of putting out this much power it's just uh, the voltage is uh, the voltage is dropping and we're getting way too much current uh, so it looks like we can't go quite to full speed with this motor this is already quite warm so unfortunately it doesn't look like we'll be able to run this to full speed today so anyway let's just uh, tear this down have a look at uh, have a look at how it's built <laughs> off pretty easily. Oh, it's got sort of a, yeah, it got sort of a two-piece construction, but not, huh, but not quite. I don't know why they separated the blades out, but a really, really aggressive pitch there. Some part numbers. You can see on the inside they've ground it out for uh, for balancing. And on the inside. Too much few ventilation holes for the motor. Bearing shut. Bearings sound a little bit iffy. You know, it's got a standard key there. Yeah, let's see if we can pull at least the back end off the motor and see the windings and maybe the rotor. Curious if the rotor on these high frequency motors looks any different from a 60 hertz one. That came off really easily. Yeah, the rotor looks somewhat different than a one from a normal uh, motor. There's, you can see there's drill uh, drill balancing holes. You can see the rotor, the conductors are made of copper rather than the normal aluminum. Also, the clearances are very, very tight. There's very little play there. Of course, pretty high quality uh, bearings. Pretty thin wire on the on the motor as well. But yeah, it's, it's really it's really small when you think about it just for scale. And how much power this tiny little motor puts out. Probably at least 500 watts. Just demonstrating how much better 400 hertz is for uh, keeping, thi uh, keeping things very small. Turns out the rotor comes out pretty easily in this. And yeah, it is very small for how powerful this is. Reminds me uh, quite, a, quite a bit of those uh, of the induction motors used in uh, high-speed uh, turbo pumps. Now, so if you look in here, you can see the stator core, and I don't know if you can see this, but the laminations are much thinner than the ones you find on a normal uh, normal motor because the frequency uh, frequency is so high, so the losses are much higher. So the, of course you have to put thinner put thinner laminations in to reduce those losses. One odd thing I noticed about this fan was that when you blocked up the airflow, it actually unloaded the motor, which is not typical for axial fans. Normally when you block up an axial fan, it loads the motor down and slows the fan down, but it doesn't happen on this one. I think that's because of the extreme pitch of the blades, and when you block it up, the air is basically just spinning around and isn't being caught by the blades and pulled forward. 
or thrown outwards. Yeah, I think the, the, the very aggressive pitch means by the time the air gets to this end, it's basically moving around in a circle with it. And then as it goes through, it catches on these other veins. That gives it sort of an additional push out the back. So, what can we use this for? What needs a stupid amount of airflow? Hmm... I'm not getting the red ring of death anymore! 